sit there and watch. <laughs> Two years ago, on this night, as this sun was setting, although it wasn't this sun, it was the Denver sun, I was sitting in the stadium, Mile High Stadium, or Arrowhead Stadium as they call it, in Denver, and I was watching a man accept the Democratic nomination for President of the United States. And I was sitting surrounded by thousands of people from all walks of life who were sitting there with tears in their eyes, embracing the fact that America can change, America can do better, America can be greater than it has been, much greater than it has been. People with tears in their eyes who waited all their lives for a moment they thought they would never see. And that was, I had tears in my eyes. In fact, I called my father uh, that night crying like a baby, saying thank you for helping me get to Denver because it was so emotional, it was so deep. And as much, I'm sure some of you went to the inauguration, as powerful as that was, the night, that night in Denver, when he accepted that nomination in that crowd, for me, was probably next to my, the birth of my two sons, uh, the most powerful night of my life in terms of pure shaking down to the core of my being and believing that something really different can happen in this world. So flash forward. Here we are two years later. We have all of this crisis that people keep talking about. We have a, a problem with leadership. We have a problem with people stepping up and taking accountability for what needs to be done at the national level, at the state level, and at the local level. We are dealing tomorrow with the fifth anniversary of one of the great natural disasters and man-made disasters that happened in this country, the anniversary of, of Hurricane Katrina's landfall and the disaster thereafter. What do we do when leadership fails us? It was kind of easy when it was George Bush in the White House, right? We all blamed George Bush. We all blamed the Republicans. Now we easily blame the Tea Party members who dare to go to Washington today and try and make it sound like they are the next coming of the Civil Rights uh, Revolution. The Civil Rights Revolution was a revolution of unselfishness. It was a way in which America said, we are going to reach out to everybody and we're going to make sure that America moves forward by being unselfish. The folks who went to Washington today are the selfish people. And they are only interested in their own self, their self-preservation, which is what human nature is about. And you can understand it because of the economy. You can understand it because of the uncertainty. But it's not acceptable. And what's really not acceptable is that Democrats are part of that. That there are Democrats who are, un who are so afraid to speak out and step up and say, you know what, we're not going to deal with this. We're not going to let you define the agenda. We're not going to let you be the leaders of America because you're not leaders. You're basically fear mongers. You're folks who only are interested in seeing others get pushed away. And how do we see that translated locally? We see that translated locally in this outrageous, outrageous battle in Lower Manhattan over the construction of the mosque. Democrats have been as guilty as Republicans at running away from this issue and not confronting it and saying, we are one people, we are going to respect religious tolerance, we're going to fight for freedom by being better than those who would take freedom away, and we are not going to allow other folks who don't get it yet and who are also bathing in their own fear to define this agenda. So Democrats have to be reminded who Democrats should be. The position of state committee that I'm running for is not a lofty position. I will not get to make many speeches like this as a state committee member on the floor of the Assembly or the Senate or the House of Representatives. I'm going to be making a different variation on the speech to my colleagues who would be in the state, on the state committee with me. There is one male, one female state committee member from every Assembly district in this state. There are 42 of them from Brooklyn alone. Those 42 people decide a county leader. The county leader decides who judges are going to be. The county leader decides what issues are going to come to the fore often for Brooklyn. The county leader decides the nature of a lot of the local politics for local offices. That county leader and many of his allies engage in unethical and non-transparent practices. Why is it that on the state committee, almost half of the members of the state committee have relatives who are judges or on the staff of judges or on the staff of elected officials? That's not a party that is inclusive. And that's not a party that's reaching out and saying, we need to embrace you and bring in more people to change. That's a party that's basically saying, it's just us. The party is for us and the party will benefit just us. That has to change. The state committee position is one community organizer position that I celebrate because I think that I can do a good job in Brooklyn as a district.
Christian Peter slash State Committee member in changing the way people view the Democratic Party. We're losing Democratic Party members in Brooklyn because people are going to non enroll. They're not becoming Republicans. Some of them may be becoming Greens, okay? Who knows? But they're not, <laughs> but they're not, but they're not becoming, they're not staying Democrats. They're going to the non enrolled category because they're not proud to be Democrats and they don't see the Democrats as offering something interesting or different. We have to be better. And so this position, this little position, which is so important in keeping our county leader in check. This little position is very important. It's a first step. Next door to this district, this is the 52nd Assembly District. Next door to this district, in the 50th Assembly District, there's another battle going on. A reformer named Lincoln Wrestler is taking on the handpicked choice of the county leader there, and he deserves support as well. But you know what? He's raised $60,000. You know, he's going to have a lot of arsenal going for him, and I'm glad for it because he's going to give them a, the, the ride of their life. We don't have $60,000. We don't necessarily need $60,000, but we need more than we have. And so I'm very glad that you're here tonight because you're showing your faith and your support in the whole process, the ideals, the strategy, and the fundraising. And I can't ask for more than that. So for those of you who have given before, thank you. For those of you who have given for the first time, thank you. For those of you who are volunteering, thank you. For those of you who never will volunteer but will tell your friends, come out and vote, thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate you being here.